Hello and welcome to the Photo Bar, the podcast talking all about the business and lifestyle photography while drinking beer. This is episode number 14, Photography Travel Tips. Hey, my name is Matt Druin, and my goal is to help you become a better person, a better photographer, and a better entrepreneur. Today, we are going to be talking about uh, photography travel tips. So grab a beer, pull up a seat, and join the conversation. With me, I have Amanda Summerlin. Hello. Hey, How's it going? Up? Good. It's been a while since I've seen you, man. Uh, not too long. What, about a week, two weeks? I don't know. I've lost track of time. It's when, all a uh, blur. We ran into each other at the airport. That was pretty weird. Yeah, I, I never just... thought that would actually happen. Actually, I've been wondering why it hasn't happened more. I mean, that's such a busy airport, and everybody's always in and out, and... It seems like I would have run into more people by now. Yeah, I've never... Maybe once I've ran into some other people like at an airport. Or, you, you know, sometimes when you're going back from, say, a wedding, a mm-hmm. lot of the guests will be on the same flights and stuff. Yeah, that's always weird. Yeah. Kind of kind of awkward. And you don't recognize them because it's like they're not in the same Not clothes, dressed up you know? anymore anymore. And they're like, <laughs> oh, hey, what's up? And you're just like, who are you? <laughs> well, um, I was just minding my own business and this weird guy started talking to me. I was like, what? Oh my God! That's the internationally famous Matt Druid. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I don't know how true that is, but that's that's. <laughs> thank you. Mm-hmm. But, uh, I guess uh, before we get into the conversation too much, um, let's check out our beers. Um, I guess I'll go first, unless you. Have, okay. Are you prepared? Always to okay. drink beer. I mean, that's. Like <laughs> <laughs> well, so I actually have something kind of special because I brought it back from my trip uh, to Michigan. And uh, one of my clients there took me out to some local breweries and stuff. And Mm -hmm. I have a Founders Brewing Company, um, Rubeus. It's a pure raspberry ale with 5.7% alcohol. So I don't know if I'm going to like it or not, but she said it's her favorite. So I told her I would have it on the podcast. Nice. Founders makes awesome stuff. I'm really a big fan of their, like, breakfast. Um, What do they call it? The, The... Breakfast uh, stout, I guess. Breakfast beer? Yeah, it's good. It's got like uh, a coffee malt and... Hmm. How is it? It actually is pretty good. It's kind of sweet, so I don't know how many of these I would actually ever have, but one, just kind of chilling, is pretty good. Yeah. What do you got? I um, found something kind of local from Jekyll Brewing, you know, based out of Alpharetta, and it is their Southern Juice India Pale Air. Ooh, I like that can. Right? It's, got, it's groovy. It caught my attention. The colors are really epic. I was like uh, looking for something a little lighter today because I'm kind of hot from running around like a maniac all day. I had an um, engagement session today and I've been like kind of at a dead run the rest of the day. So it says they brewed this IPA with a sensational experience in mind. It's got oats and wheat and Citra and Simcoe hops. It's inspired by the Northeast and brewed in the South. So... Hmm. Well, this podcast is pretty sensational, I think. So it's a <laughs> fitting beer. Oh, it's very, very citrusy smelling. Kind of piney even. It's good. Oh, yeah, that's good. That's very citrusy. Love that. Good, Bill? You like it? Definitely. Yeah, it's, uh, it's got a bite to it. I like it. Like kind of a hoppy bite? Yeah, definitely. Okay, I, You know, I, uh, I like them really hoppy. Huh? Yeah, I do too. Not always, but yeah, most of the time it's pretty hoppy. But uh, let's see what else we got going on here. Um, oh, real quick. So, um, you know, we, we just launched the podcast not too long ago. We're at mm-hmm. episode, shit, what did I say this was? 14. Mm-hmm. Um, and so far, we've gotten over 1,200 downloads. Nice. And a number of reviews. I know that's fucking crazy, isn't it? Like, I seriously thought it would be like six people, like my mom, you know, <laughs> and a couple friends. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty crazy. I don't know if it's like, that big in the podcast world but for me that that's amazing that's pretty cool i think it's because of your hair because it's it's such a cool color right now oh uh, yeah currently it is blue yeah definitely i like how it like complements your eyes oh, i think that's you. nice yeah I mean, you, you kind of got this coordination thing going on with your hoodie and everything i really like how you <laughs> pulled this ensemble together it's very, very unintentional very nice. <laughs> yeah i dyed my hair blue t- kind of temporarily just because my uh my son loves the pj mask and catboy is blue and that's his favorite character so he suggested i dye my hair blue and nice. like a good parent you know i was like all right cool i'll do that so yeah that's why i have blue hair currently 
these downloads are crazy. That's awesome. Seriously, huge thank you to everybody that's listening and everybody for downloading and leaving reviews and stuff. And actually, towards the end, I'll, I'll read some some names off that have left reviews for us. That would be really cool. Yeah. Are, are we getting pretty good reviews? People like us? Yep. All the reviews that we've gotten are pretty awesome. It kind of sucks because um, uh, the way iTunes works and stuff, I, like I have to log into to different countries to find the mm-hmm. reviews in those countries. You ah. can't just go to like iTunes and look at the podcast and like see all the reviews. So I have to keep switching back and forth through all these different countries to find them. But yeah, I spent some time today doing that, just looking through them and stuff. And I, I read the reviews pretty often, but really yeah, cool. I wanted to get some actual names to kind of, you know, shout some people out and stuff. And definitely, uh, yeah, again, seriously, it's been so amazing. And thank you for everybody. Like, yeah, definitely. Seriously, Thanks, so cool. everybody. Oh, also, I want to um, send a huge thank you to uh, Mike uh, Thong. Thong, I believe his name is pronounced. Sorry, man, if I'm just like fucking your name up real bad. But uh, <laughs> he's a graphic designer, a photographer um, with uh, Clementine Photography. And he actually designed the logo for the photo bar. So, oh, cool. Yeah. Awesome logo. We love the logo. Yeah, it's super rad. I got a lot of compliments on it. So, yeah, huge thank you to him for that. But, yeah, other than that, man, what have you, what you been up to? Um, it's been a little crazy. The The winter break never really happened. So I've yeah. been shooting. I picked up a couple of extra, like, kind of last-minute weddings. Um, I've been doing a lot of engagement sessions. And like I said, I did one this, this afternoon downtown. This really cool park, too, that I hadn't been to before that had, like, this great boardwalk and um, a whole bunch of, like, murals and stuff down in uh, the Dru- Druid Hills area. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we, we hung out at the, the tea parlor and had oh, high nice. tea. It was fun. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, one cool thing about Atlanta is our art scene is pretty amazing. And the whole city just changes, like, all the time with art and murals and graffiti and stuff it's pretty rad yeah i love hunting down the murals and making uh cool cool work with them because they give you such Mm -hmm. an interesting background and uh you know there seems to be um a lot more interest in in creating art spaces and not just like you know sticking something up there's a there was like this cool um display of art birdhouses Oh. On, on the walking path and they were like these neat bird houses kind of shaped like birds you know interesting okay abstract abstract looking kind of birds and I was like this is really cool because it's like you know I guess they needed to put some bird houses in for whatever reason and instead of just making you know basic bird houses they decided to make an art piece out of it and I was, thought that was a really nice touch well that is cool it's kind of like a Airbnb bird house yeah, yeah pretty much yeah hope they're getting good rates up there <laughs> you still painting your house no, I finally got all that stuff done. Yeah, I didn't uh, take any extra jobs, you know, this holiday season through the winter. I turned a, a few down, but I yeah. was uh, I took some time off, you know, to do a little remodeling in the house, do some painting, and you know, some other stuff that you have to do when you own a house. You know, you do adulting hashtag adulting. I, I'm pretty <laughs> sure. I mean, I read that online, so that's that's uh, what I was doing. Must be true. But. Um, yeah, that's really about it. But yeah, I flew out, you know, to Michigan when I started at the airport for an engagement mm-hmm. session and came back. And then, um, really, it's just been a lot of meetings and you know, getting engagement sessions set up and that mm-hmm. sort of thing before everything kind of kicks in. You know, all the normal end of the year taxes and all that bullshit kind of stuff. Taxes. Oh, Is yeah. it that time again? Oh. Yeah, I'm already done with mine. Well, the accountants are done with it. I don't do my own taxes, but <laughs> yeah, the bookkeeper and the accountants, you know, they do their thing. I verify everything, and that was it. That's pretty smooth. Yeah, done. I don't. Jesse does all that stuff. I have no idea whether our taxes are done or not. So we better better call her up and be like, "Hey, what's up?" Nah, I trust her. She'll, she'll take care of us. You're leaving tomorrow, right? Flying yep. out somewhere. I'm going to get on a plane at 6.50 a.m. and fly to Portland. Then I'm going to drive to the coast, and we're going to have a working retreat with a friend for a couple days. And then I'm going to drive up to Seattle to do an engagement session and see some client friends. Um, There's a couple whose wedding I shot, I don't know, I guess four years ago now. And we've stayed friends the whole time, so I'm going to hang out with them. I'm going to go snow tubing. Oh, man. And then I'm going to drive back to Portland, fly to San Francisco, and I'm going to shoot a wedding for a couple who's flying in from Singapore. 
and doing the city hall thing and hang out with my friend Tammy and I'm going to go to Phil's Coffee and I'm going to stock up and I'm going to bring about like 20 pounds of that stuff. Yeah, you're bringing they, me some back, right? Totally. Okay. And uh, yeah, I'm taking my big bag to check so I can bring back as much as I want and then I'll, <laughs> <laughs> I'll fly back on the 14th. Man, that sounds fucking epic, dude. Uh, I'm kind of, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like excited about it, but I'm also like, God, I'm tired already just thinking about it because it's a lot of, a lot of moving, you know, I've mm-hmm. got to do flying and driving and yeah. Yeah. I think that's, um, I don't know if it's overlooked or just a misconception or something. I think a lot of photographers think as destination wedding photographers, it's real glamorous, but I don't mm-hmm. think it's as glamorous of a lifestyle as most people think. Like, I think it's way harder and, like, definitely more stressful. It can be really stressful. I mean, the especially uh, West Coast trips, they can be tricky. You know, like, mm-hmm. on, on this this trip, I've got layovers all, all of my back and forth uh, in, in coastal flights. And so, you know, it's like an hour on the ground isn't really as long as you, you think it is. Mm, no, it's you never and, is. And so, you know, I always give myself plenty of time to get there last year i had my first ever um bad flying experience doing that um and i was flying out to an elopement in big sur and uh, had a layover in i think it was houston or something like that and the, the flight leaving atlanta was delayed 40 minutes or so and it landed in houston 10 minutes after my connecting flight took off and they, oh, no. for whatever reason, didn't hold the flight. So then I had to sit in Houston for about five hours, I think it was, fly back to New Orleans and get a flight and then fly to Oakland. And so I ended up, um, I had set up like a lunch with an old college friend and I ended up missing that. But ultimately I still got on the ground in California in time to shoot the wedding because I, I, you know, I had set it up to get myself well more than 24 hours in advance. So... Well, I guess it all worked out then. Yeah, you know, it's, it's kind, kind of, of part of the, the thing. But, you know, if I had cut it closer with that, that would have been really stressful. Yeah, I bet. Well, that's a good point. I mean, that kind of brings us into like the whole topic of photography travel tips. So I don't know. Do tip, you want you want to go first? Or do you want me to go? Tip number one: Make sure you give yourself plenty of time to get there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's always a must for sure. Yeah, I Especially guess maybe for a wedding. Um, we'll just go uh, back and forth. Yeah, speaking yeah. of speaking of which. Um, how soon do you get to, like, say you're going to shoot a wedding or something, how early do you do you arrive? Um, as early as possible. The, I always fly out the day before, and I take the very first flight I can get on the day before. Every That's time. what I That's do, five, too. Yeah, I'm always at the airport at, like, 5 a.m. waiting for yeah. the TSA to open up, mm-hmm. um, or the, the pre-check, I mean. And, uh, yeah, I'm because, you know, first of all, the first flight's usually not going to get delayed. Um, it's going to go out on time most of the time unless there's a weather event um so and the delays are cumulative so if you've got like a mid-afternoon flight and either the 10 a.m flight went sideways then that sort of starts rolling and then Mm -hmm. by mid-afternoon or late afternoon all the flights are late um and i know they juggle gates and stuff like that but it especially certain airlines you know they don't have such a great on-time rate yeah you want to just sort of try to get yourself out as, as soon as you can plus you know if you get in town early enough like um last couple couple three weeks ago i had a houston wedding and i got into houston at like you know 9 a.m and i drove to their fine arts museum and spent the day at the museum that was really cool they have a great fine arts museum there awesome yeah i i um i do the same thing like i like to travel early in the mornings one because you know like traffic state to the airport's not that bad yeah and it seems like earlier flights are the less desirable so they're not as Mm -hmm. busy um which I prefer. And then, yeah, you can get there early. I fly in at least a day early. Yeah. And kind of for the same reasons, you know, I just want to make sure I'm going to be there on time in case there's delays or anything. And then also it gives me time to kind of like explore the city a little bit and do some other stuff and kind of rest up before, you know, shooting Mm. the wedding the next day. Do you ever Um, drive by the venues and check them out and stuff? Yeah, I I do do that. Just kind of depending on how far away I am and stuff. Yeah. Um, But I don't really check them out too much. You know? I mean, I, I like to sort of, if I think it's going to be tricky to locate it, to sort of like no, a dry yeah, exactly. run. Yeah, that, yeah, that's the reason why I do it, is just to really to know where I'm going. Um, yeah. But I'm not there, like, trying to set up shots or anything like that. No, that yeah. never works. No, never. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> and I discover I used to try to do that. I used to try to show up the day before and scan out all my shots. And, and I learned it's like, if I think this is going to be a great spot for um, a portrait or whatever, they're going to put a table there. <laughs> yeah, the light, I, I, the lights gonna um, be really different tomorrow. You know, all exactly, that stuff. exactly. Yeah, even locally and stuff. Like I quit doing like venue walkthroughs and stuff. Probably my going into my third year, I just kind of quit doing them all together. Yeah, partly because I was traveling a lot. You know, and it's mm-hmm. like you, you can't really do venue walkthroughs typically and stuff for destination weddings and things. But um, yeah. but also I kind of felt it like it, it changed my creativity. I guess because mm-hmm. I would have like all these amazing ideas, and then the next day it's like. Like we're running late, or the weather shit, or mm-hmm. um, something's always different, and it's like yep. never envisioned in my head. So I'm just kind of like, it just throws everything off. And I actually prefer and like just to kind of roll in somewhere, and just kind of let the creative process take over, and you just mm-hmm. kind of figure stuff out as you go. And no, no, I well, like that process. I, I think that as you mature as a photographer, you know, you you get really good at thinking on your feet. True. And yeah. you get really good at spotting light. And I see light a lot differently now mm-hmm. than I did, you know, a year ago or two years ago, or three years ago. And it's it's something that really to me dictates what I'm gonna do. It's not the yeah. location, it's the light. Um, if I see a beautiful ray of light next to a dumpster, I'm gonna make a photo next to a dumpster, you know. I don't yeah. I don't necessarily need light yeah, and it's funny because um a lot of the places the the venues will have like someone who um is the coordinator or whatever and they'll they'll try to tell you where to shoot. And it's oh, really? I've never really had that. You never No. Uh, I, I um Oh well, well they might suggest like well most photographers do x y and z and i'm like all right well i'm not gonna do any of that uh, exactly <laughs> that, that but that's the thing it's like oh everyone always makes a photo here i'm like great tip thanks going this way yeah you, know? you don't want to do the same thing as everybody else like what's special about that no i mean and and if the couple really wants a photo in a spot i'm, I'm of course going to do what they want to do but at the same time it's mm-hmm. like part of what they're choosing me to do is to do how you see it best yeah Yeah. is how i see the light and how i how i how i render the light with my camera so yeah yeah i fully agree and it's just amazing sometimes you just kind of roll into a place and you're just like overly inspired like there's just too much awesome shit to deal with right um and then other times there's like literally nothing and you have to create something out of nothing and i don't know (laughs) both ways are kind of fun to deal with right the ultimate challenge yeah all right, so let's hop into the list here. Um, okay. So neither one of us have actually communicated about any tips here. So I guess let's just go back and forth and or see which and ones blind. overlap. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my first one will be um, when I book travel, like online, I mm-hmm. like to use DuckDuckGo, which is a search engine that doesn't like um, track your history or anything like that. And I also will use a VPN to block sites from knowing like what type of computer and phone and stuff that I'm using because mm-hmm. often sites will increase prices for Apple yeah. users because in general Apple customers are less are, price sensitive. Are you making that up for real? Uh, no, that's that's a legit thing. Like you can so, visit like uh, say retail shopping for example. You can uh-huh. visit a website just you know without anything and see a price and then visit again with everything hidden and it will be cheaper. No way. Mm-hmm. Okay, you said duck, duck, go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just writing this duck, down duck, right duck, now. Go. <laughs> oh my god! That's but yeah, just duck, duck, go is pretty awesome because they um, they don't track anything. So if no. you want to be completely like anonymous online, that's the way to go. I mean, that's what I use at least. Um, and then the VPN is like what protects you. I guess you know, it's a virtual mm-hmm. private network. I believe it is what it stands for. Yeah, I think that's um, right. But I also will use a VPN like when you're in airports and shit. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, I will use that so like hackers and shit if they're at the airport you know couldn't hop on you know my stuff as easily yeah well I you know and especially staying in hotels and stuff mm-hmm. it's um, exactly. really easy for people to to hack your uh, computer so yeah I, I, I've been meaning to get a VPN on my, my laptop for a while now and I, I haven't but I don't have any actual data stored on my laptop either other than um Mm, yeah, my e- my email account password, and that's really it. And it's a it's a dumb one that's not like any of my other stuff. You know, I have like a hierarchy of passwords for all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Anytime I, I'm out anywhere, I'm, I use a VPN, even on my mm-hmm. phone and stuff. The one I use is called uh, Private Internet Access, 
mm-hmm. and it's uh, it's pretty awesome. Like I haven't had any issues with it, and it works. Usually, sometimes like when you're using s- certain VPNs, your internet will get really slow because um, it's bouncing to all these different servers and stuff. Mm-hmm. But, uh, I haven't really had much issue with with that. I use it on my phone. I use it on my laptop, and sometimes at home, depending on what I'm doing, just so I can get tracked by uh, you know Comcast and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so I would recommend that. Cool. What do you got? I, I do travel a little bit differently because I, early on, picked the vendors I was going to use, and we have stuck with them. So I, uh, I fly Southwest, I um, stay in Marriott Chain Hotels, and I rent Hertz. And so I have, you know, all of the elite accounts and all of those um, chains, and it works out really well. I have a Marriott credit card, a Marriott Visa. Um, similar to the, the Chase Blue or Sapphire, I think it's called, where you get a, a jillion points for any travel that you book. Um, so if I book um, a hotel, um, a Marriott chain hotel with my Marriott card, then I get like three to five points per dollar I spend, depending on whatever promotions they're running. Um, and then, you know, the Hertz thing where you, you rent a certain number of cars per year, and then when you show up, you just look at the board and you go to the, the five star corral and pick the car you want. It's actually really cool. They just changed how they do that because they used to assign you a car. So you go look at the board and it would tell you what stall your car was in. But now it's like, just go over here and pick the car you want. So you tell it what class of car you want to rent and they have them in, in corrals. And so you just go walk down and pick the one and just get in. The keys are in it and you go. Um, and then, of course, with Southwest, you know, they, they have a really cool system with um, – their a list and they check in early so you don't have to check yourself in and you get to board the plane first and pick your seat and check two bags for free that is alone worth flying southwest for that whole two bags for free that's awesome because this trip i've got you know my my big rolling duffel bag just packed full of you know light stands and camera bag and probably some clothes or something a couple of pairs of pants probably um but just being able to just hand that off and not to pay a fee for it I, I, the airlines that that nickel and dime you to death mm. that's you know they they have those you know alluringly low rates for the flight and then it's yep. like well yeah but if you want a bottle of water that's gonna be 23 dollars. if you want to sit in a seat oh man do you want to sit in the aisle no, there's another 40 dollars. you know it's kind of crazy no that's true like um I used to fly Delta kind of semi-frequently, and I, I love Southwest, so I always try to fly them, but sometimes, like, they don't have flights to where I need to go. Yeah. Um, but when you compare prices, like, say, Southwest versus Delta, for example, and you start mm-hmm. factoring in all the nickel and diming, it's usually way more. Um, yeah. And, like, I don't know. Southwest is pretty amazing. Like, their customer service is always good. Like, I've never had any issues. The flight attendants are amazing. Pilots are cool. Um, they tell the best jokes. They do have good jokes. And, like, I don't know. I feel like Southwest is kind of like the millennials, like, airplane, you know? I like, guess so. <laughs> just, they send you so many drink coupons. Oh, I no have. shit, man. I, I have so many. I got, like, 25 <laughs> right now. <laughs> Dude, I, have, I have been known to buy the entire row of drinks before. I did that like, when I came I've back from Michigan. I got all these coupons, I yeah. Did. Like, there was this lady that was sitting next to me. Um, it was her first time ever flying. Has real bad anxiety, apparently, already. You know, she's mm-hmm. like, just on all kinds of medications for that shit or whatever. And she was flipping out, you know. Um, and I was just offered everybody a drink. And, like, everybody took one. And she just kind of chilled out. And, nice. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. I, was super cool. <laughs> I, I read a lot of uh, business books all the time. And, and Southwest is, is always cited in case studies because they have an amazing customer service. They have an amazing reputation for treating their employees well. Um, and they just have really – phenomenal business practices so they're they're someone that you know as a as someone who my entire our entire business is customer service it's what we do you know it's it's a really great model yeah. to look at you know and go experience that because everywhere else you go everybody's kind of a jerk so it's like hey at least i'm gonna go get on this plane and they'll be nice to be there and you know yeah they've uh, been in the top two to three spots you know for the last I don't know, three four or five years maybe yeah so yeah i would agree with that Speaking of which, I would, um, since, I mean, you automatically get checked in with Southwest, but I would mm-hmm. suggest checking in online, like the second it's available to check in, um, mm-hmm. regardless of, you know, who you're traveling with or whatever, especially with like Southwest and stuff, because they, they board by 
priority or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, the and then it's in the order better. that you check in. So yeah. if you're like lagging, they also have that thing where it's you can pay fifteen dollars and they'll check you in. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, it's each way. That. Yeah. So I mean, if you're if you're worried, um, you know, you're not going to be available to check in, and you know, you're not going to be sitting on top of you know the app or whatever. You can just pay fifteen dollars and they'll check you in thirty six hours early instead of twenty four. Oh, cool. I'll have to look yeah. into that. I mean, I guess the important thing about checking in early is not just to get a good seat, but also um, for so your you don't gear. get pumped. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, a lot of times for your gear, too. Like, I've mm-hmm. been in situations to where it's like, you know, especially like, on, I think it's American. Um, mm-hmm. They always claim that the shit's filled up on the plane when it's really not. And then they start really? checking everybody's bags and stuff. Yeah. Um, that's happened to me a couple times. And then I had to, like explain what I had, how much it was worth, and all this stuff, then all of a sudden, magically, they found a spot for it, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, they're. I mean, all airlines are really good if you tell them that you have camera equipment. They will yeah, help you out. Part, Especially if you say, issues. I'm going to a wedding mm-hmm. or whatever, they're going to they're gonna find it in their cold little hearts to help you out. Yeah, and that's but that's just another reason to check in early, you know, so you can make sure you can get your gear on the plane yeah. with you, um, which is another tip in itself, is to always bring your gear on the plane and don't check it, um, because Definitely. baggage handling is not very... Have nice. you seen the videos on YouTube, what <laughs> yeah, they do I've down there? Yeah, I've seen plenty of them. Yeah, I've seen Pelican <laughs> cases break open and shit. It's crazy. It kind of, remi- kind of reminds me like a, of a cartoon, like a Tom and Jerry cartoon, where there's like a big stick with a boot on the end and just kick stuff. Because that's yeah. like, literally what's going on down there is like there's all these like punching things, just shoving stuff around. Yeah, yeah. I have um, the rolling duffel that I use that I bought from REI. So, you know, right away, it's like, I bought this at REI. I spent a lot of money on it. It's really tough. And it's getting... Yeah, it's gonna be about four years old now. It's getting a crap beat out of it. Yeah. I'm I'm kind of uh, impressed at how much damage they've managed to do to it. I mean, it's it's gonna last another couple of years, but it's yeah, impressive. I guess that's another good point. Is like uh, buy really good bags, you know, mm-hmm. like camera bags and shit, because it's like I've been using a Think Tank um, uh, airport security for probably about yeah. um, five years, and it's still in mint condition. I love um, my think tank. They're the best. Yeah, I would fully agree. I mean, I recently just switched to the airport international to, to travel all the time. Um, mm-hmm. That was a nice bag. I saw it. We were, I was I was admiring it while you were getting. Yeah, it's just so much smaller. Shop. And like the, I mean, it was. Well, it's not even a lot smaller. It's it's, it's not a lot smaller, but it's just yeah. you know just a, a little bit. A little bit. But but it, so it makes you can a big get difference overhead. When you're trying to like get shit in the overhead, and mm-hmm. I can actually wheel it through the middle of the aisle now. Um, can you really? Yeah. So yeah, I have the uh, the what is it the airport security version two or whatever. That's what I and have, yeah. yeah, and it's it's tricky to get it in the overhead on some planes because yep. I, the overhead is 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 different, slightly different sizes, give or take a couple inches, uh, and so on certain planes I, it has to go wheels out, and other planes it has to go yeah. wheels in. Sometimes it can't even go you know long; it has to be turned sideways. sideways. Yep. Yeah. And I know uh, on Southwest at least, but it could be on true on other airplanes. The um, the bins are actually smaller up front, and then they get wider yes. and wider into the middle, and then they get smaller again towards the back. Yeah, I tend to pick about row five, six, seven, eight. That's usually yeah, where that's I about try where to be. Yeah, five through ten somewhere in there. So, oh, well, I guess speaking of bags and stuff, is to um, I would suggest the really thinking through the amount of gear that you're bringing. Right. Um, I mean, we travel frequently, so I know exactly what to bring every single time, and it's the exact same stuff that I bring to local weddings and stuff too. But I think if you don't fly very often or you don't, you know, travel for photography in mm-hmm. general, that you, you tend to overpack a lot of shit. When I first started, that was me, man. I brought yeah. freaking everything. And the shit gets so heavy carrying it through airports and when you have delays and just all this stuff. It's just way too much, too heavy and exhausting. Yeah, well, I, th- I think that's something that comes along with, you know, sort of finding your voice as a photographer mm-hmm. anyway. Yeah, you, that's true. You know, in the beginning, you're like, give me all the toys. And and then, I mean, I've been steadily shedding stuff Me too. for the past two, three mm-hmm. years. I'm just like, I don't need that. I don't use that. And there's nothing in my bag that doesn't get used anymore. Exactly. It's like, yeah, I mean, some of the stuff gets used more often. But if if I carry it to three weddings and I haven't used it, it's not staying in there. Nope, it's gone. You know, yeah, it's I that's agree. tough. You know, and and I I still get suckered into like you know cool stuff. I mean, every time Magma comes out with something new, I'm like, ooh, that's <laughs> neat. <laughs> you know, and I, I have a I have like a, a system or whatever with how I shoot everything, and then there's this 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 one toy that I bought from them that I haven't used in a while. And I'm gonna have to ditch it. So, 
Yeah, I agree. I mean, the magma stuff gets me, man. I just love all their shit. Right. Uh, do you have a tip, or should I just keep reading some shit that I wrote down? Um, tell me what you. I, you, you made me blank, man. Tell. Okay, I'll tell keep going said. through here, and cause I think we're gonna have a lot of overlapping stuff, so I'll keep going sure. through my list. And when mm-hmm. I get done, you can add whatever I missed, or all right. We can just talk about you know how you do something versus I do, I guess. So I guess my next one we've already kind of talked about was um, do not check your gear. Like, don't Never, check ever. photography equipment at the airport. Um, occasionally, you know how they start, like, you get to the gate, you, you have your carry-on, but then they're like, hey, we're filled up, we're going to be checking bags or whatever. Mm. That's never happened. To, well, it, those situations have happened to me a few times, but I've managed to get my gear on the plane. Yeah. Um, but if you, you can't do that, then what I would do is take all the most expensive shit out, like cameras and lenses and stuff, and carry that with you, and then just check everything else, I guess, at that point. Yeah, I had um, an experience, and I and this is a this is a tip that, or this is a thing that I do. I never fly the little uh, commuter planes anymore. I will drive, you know, three or four hours from a larger airport that, instead of flying into a smaller airport on a regional plane because the overhead bins on those planes are too small for my camera bag. That's why you have to and, get the international because it will fit. Um, no, not on all of them. Um, I have a backpack that's smaller than your international that I like when I'm doing an engagement session a lot of times if I'm just flying out and back I will I will carry my backpack instead of my um it was a, it's a low pro I should look up what it is it's right here but it's it's really awesome and it's small and it'll fit under a seat and so I've flown on a delta plane not that long ago that was um such a small plane it was like super cramped chairs on each side kind of thing that had um, overhead bins that were barely large enough to get my computer bag into. Jeez. Um, Yeah. So fortunately I had that backpack with me on that trip and it would fit under a seat. Yeah. The, the regional planes, you know, depending on what kind of traffic is going to whatever location, you know, they, they'll still size them down. That, and that's, that's something you have to remember is airlines. It's like when Delta in particular, man, when, when you book a flight with Delta, um, and they've estimated how many people are going to go on that flight. They'll say that it's going to be this plane. And they'll change it three or four times between the time you book that flight and the yeah, time you no take shit. that flight, you know? That's annoying. And so, right? well, and the same thing with the gates. And it's, everything's just, they keep changing shit around. Yeah. But it's like, you, 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 because you can look and see what plane they're saying they're, you're going to yeah. be on. And, and, you know, after you fly enough, you start to, to recognize, oh, I, this plane has this configuration. And yep, they, yep. they have that, that, that app where you can look it up or the website where you can look it up and see, like, what seats are recommended and all that, right? Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I was um, flying. I can't remember where I was flying on, the, on Delta, but the, they, they changed me and bumped my seat and bumped my seat and bumped my seat. And they kept moving me around the plane because they kept changing planes. Yeah, I've had a few issues like that with, like, when you get on those pond hoppers and stuff, you know, like like a few times when I went to Puerto Rico or Hawaii and stuff, and you mm-hmm. jump from island to island, those things are pretty tiny. It's like you don't really have an option but to put your gear underneath the plane. But with those, it's like, you know, you got, like, ten people. It's not, it's hand put in there and stuff. Yeah, so that's different. Like, yeah, yeah it's, it's a little bit different. Um, yeah, I got um, on a United flight, and they gate checked my my I think tank that. bag for me, and I was crying because it would not fit in the overhead, and I was like, "Oh man, it's camera gear. I'm going to a wedding. I think I was coming back from a wedding, but I'll lie. I don't care because <laughs> I don't want my bag to go away." Yeah. It may, and you know th- that that reminds me of another tip: is multiple backups, multiple backups. Mm-hmm. You know, by the by the time I've gone to sleep after a wedding, I have made a backup. And there's a backup of the wedding in every bag I'm carrying. Yeah, me too. I have four oh. when I leave a wedding. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good so, tip. I think we talked about that When they take that bag before. away. Yeah, but I mean, that, that it always bears repeating backup. Yep. Backup, no, I fully backup. agree. Right. I'm obsessed. But yeah, I mean, if they make you gate check your, your bag and your cards are in there, you know, you should, have, you should have a backup in your computer bag, your backpack, whatever you're carrying, you know, so that there's always one on your person. Yeah. Smart move. I would fully agree with that. Really? Um, I, w- I guess we'll keep going with airplanes for now. Um, one thing that I do on airplanes is I use earplugs because my ears get really fucked up, you know, from the pressure changes and shit. So yeah. I'll use earplugs, but I'll also pair that with a pair of noise-canceling headphones. 
which <laughs> works amazing for the pressure and stuff, but also to eliminate all the noise so you can sleep or you can just kind of be immersed in your little world of, you know, video watching or video gaming or whatever you're doing, working, you know. Ah, cool. So if you pair both of them together, it's like you don't hear shit. That's pretty smooth. Yeah, that's pretty I just nice. use my uh, my Brain FM account and listen to concentrate right brain music or whatever. Okay. That told you about them? Yep. Yeah, told- yeah. yeah, we talked about that before. I don't know if we yeah. talked about it on the podcast, but we, yeah, we've talked about that before. When I'm on a plane, so I'm usually either listening to podcasts mm-hmm. or um, I have like an Amazon Instant Video account, so it allows mm-hmm. you to download movies and TV shows like for oh, offline yeah. viewing. Um, I don't know if Netflix does that. I haven't tried it. But um, that way I can watch TV, you know, movies, whatever, you know, when you're in the air because you don't have service at that point. But yeah, <laughs> so I do that. And then I also, um, like, I have a laptop with a video game emulator on it. So I'll play, like, Super Mario and Zelda <laughs> and, and shit. <laughs> like, and all the that kids and parents fun. are just like, whoa. And I have, like, a, a PS4 controller that I used to play it with and stuff. So, like, all the kids are into it. And sometimes I'll give my laptop to, like, the kids sitting next to me or whatever so they can play it. And, yeah, it's That's pretty cool. That's hilarious. I'm boring. I just read. And I just sit and read, and it's awesome. I've got two books for tomorrow, actually, because I've got, you know, about nine hours of flying, I think, tomorrow. Jeez. Yeah. Sounds exhausting already, man. <laughs> right? Um, I yeah, guess that makes a good point, though, is to make use of your flight times and mm-hmm. layovers and stuff. So... Often I'm editing photos on planes and layers. Yeah. Uh, I'm creating blog posts. I'm um, writing podcast notes and mm-hmm. just all kinds of shit. Like I'll pre-write emails on the plane. And when I land, yeah. you know, you connect to, to Wi-Fi or whatever and you can send them all out and stuff like that, you know. So you can make good use of all that time. Or you can just play Mario. <laughs> I, I, I used to have a PSP that I would take with me, but um, I, I started, uh, I figured out the whole reading thing and that was that was glorious. No, you sound adult. No, not really. You don't. You don't know what I'm reading. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh um, man, you don't make it sound like that. Let's see I what else I got know. here. All right, here's some good ones. All right, so this is one that I freaking forget to do all the damn time. But is and we talked about this. I think last time we saw each other at the airport is to mm. get a reusable bottle, like a uh, like a water bottle that you can reuse. You know, like mm-hmm. those ones that you wash and shit. Because you could take, you could dump all the liquid out, take that through TSA, refill it on the other side for free, and we got a water while we were there, and it was like what three fifty mm-hmm. for a freaking twenty ounce bottle of water, which is absurd. <laughs> um, but you're paying the airport, you know, convenience fee and the fact that you know you can't leave. Oh, here's here's kind of a good one. Um, I like to pack dryer sheets in a Ziploc bag, so when I come back with dirty clothes. I keep those, you know, in the hotels, they always have those like laundry bags. Uh-huh. Um, I'll put all my dirty clothes in those laundry bags and then put some of those um, dryer sheets in there with it so it doesn't <laughs> smell shit up. Um, okay, Martha I, Stewart. That is yeah. like the weirdest tip ever. Dude, I'm telling you, try that. All right, pack some shit tonight, try it <laughs> tomorrow, right. and let me know how that works out because it, it's yeah, amazing. I like, I'm coming back with all dirty clothes. They're all going in the laundry. I don't know that Dude, it bothers put, me. Put that those in just, your just bags and stuff and you won't have any smells. <laughs> it's awesome. But uh, pack snacks, like I don't like to pay for fucking shit, like a, you know, especially if you're doing it for business, because anything that you buy is just an expense, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I like to pack snacks like trail mix and bacon. Yes, I pack bacon, <laughs> boiled pack bacon. eggs. I'll even bring on like this uh, is why you need the dryer sheets. <laughs> chicken and Ziploc bags. Tea, I bring chicken. tea bags with me. Yeah. I'm prepared. I, mean, I, I, like a full I pack my vitamins and I got some peanut butter cups. <laughs> No, I pack like a full meal, man, so that way I can travel and, and style. You're like that person who pops the tray down and busts open the canned asparagus and tuna salad. You're like, yeah. Yeah, I try not to, yeah that's, a, that's a good tip, though, is not to bring smelly shit on a plane, because I cannot tell you how many times I've been on a plane, and somebody brings in some just like, just like I don't know, like wings, and just like the craziest, smelliest onion food and stuff. And everybody <laughs> there is sitting there, and they're smelling the whole damn plane with their food. So, uh, like, don't do that. That's just pretty See, the, the food doesn't doesn't bother me. I just wish people wouldn't crop dust you when they're on the way to the... To the <laughs> <laughs> I always get an aisle seat, you know, because I, yep, I get claustrophobic by the window, so I'm uh, always right there. 
<laughs> Plus, I have ADHD, and I can't sit still, so I'm constantly like getting up and down, like wiggling and moving and shit, mm-hmm. and it just drives everybody bananas. So the only time I ever get in a window seat is if I know I'm going to be going somewhere super cool that I want to shoot photos or video of. Yeah. Um, th- then I'll do that. But any other time, I just I, I pee a lot. I just like I'm moving around a lot. I'm like walking up the aisles. I'm like stretching and doing yoga in the back and shit. For real? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, just because like you know like I don't want to get sore back or sore bodies mm-hmm. and stuff. So like yeah. especially going to the west coast, I'll uh, I'll get into the back and like stretch. And... Oh, that reminds me of another thing. I just bought some compression socks. Have you no. tried compression wear yet? No. So um, we were we were somewhere, and I just kind of like picked them up on a whim. I'm like, because I'd heard about them or whatever. And so you know they come like all the way up to almost your knee or whatever, and they have some some compression. They they squeeze you and it improves your circulation or whatever. And it's supposed to be for like when you sit down for a long time or recovering from working out. Um, and I I put them on after getting back from the gym. My legs felt brand new within an hour. It was crazy. It's like they Ooh. just they just feel all happy. You're like this is good stuff. And so I was I was gonna try those tomorrow when I fly because you know you. It, they talk about how sitting down is bad for your circulation and all that or whatever. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm just going to wear these because it may, I mean, it just, it literally made my, my legs and feet feel happy. I'm like, Ooh, I feel good. I could <laughs> dance, you know? And, uh, yeah. And that's more I important bought... the older you get. Thanks, man. I, I just said in general, I wasn't referring to I'm not old girl. <laughs> Another tip would be to stay at hotels outside of the city if possible, because it's cheaper than in the city. And then also check with your credit card company. Like if you use a credit card um, for rental cars and shit, um, a lot of the credit card companies will actually cover uh, rental cars. And then also check with your car insurance company to see if they cover rental cars too. Because mm-hmm. like rental car companies make a shit ton of money. It's on, like $13 a day or something like yeah, that. Yeah, or whatever time. it is. I mean, they make a yeah. shit ton of money off the upcharges of selling insurance and shit that you don't even need if you have like an insurance company that already covers it. And I pair Most that with insurance does. does. Yeah, 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 they do. Unless you're traveling out of the country and stuff, then it might get a little bit dicier. But yeah, for the most part. Let's see. You uh, let's see. use TSA luggage locks. I think that's kind of a given. But yeah, right. you should probably yeah. lock, your, lock your shit up, and they have to be TSA approved. Um, or, or zip ties work for that, by yep, the way. Yep, zip ties too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. Oh, here's kind of a tip that a lot of people probably don't do that I do all the freaking time. Is More instead dryer of wearing, sheets? What's that? More dryer sheets? Nope. Nothing to do with dry sheets, but it does have to do something with clothes. Um, instead of wearing a belt, I actually will wear a shoelace, and that way I don't have to deal with taking off a belt on and off when you go through, like, the metal detectors and TSA and, and shit. Don't you have pre-check? You have pre-check. We, no, I do. Met. Yeah, I do, but yeah. not everybody does. Well, this is a tip. Yeah. Get pre-check. Oh, yeah, that is a good <laughs> one. I actually know? have it written down here. I totally forgot to mention yeah. it. But, like, it's yeah, $80 if you travel, for five years, right? Um, I looked it up, and I think it's, it's 85 Okay. for a pre-check or it's $100 for a global entry and both of them mm-hmm. are good for five years but if you travel okay. I would say more than a couple times a year it's definitely well worth getting if you travel once a year then maybe not but um, it's amazing how much time you can save like literally me and my assistant last year went somewhere um, he didn't have TSA pre-check so I just rolled in within like 10-15 minutes I waited on the other side for an hour and 20 minutes for him to get through at the Atlanta what? TSA yeah. oh my it was God. crazy I took a nap like, literally. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I know that at the Atlanta airport, you know, the, the pre-check doesn't open until 5 a.m. And they have a lot yeah. of flights going out pretty early. So sometimes you'll show up and you'll be standing in line at the pre-check. And Even everybody's just kind of quick. walking through main security because there's not a line at all. But I'm yeah. like, I really don't want to take my shoes off. I don't want to take my computer out anymore. So it's worth waiting 10 minutes in the pre-check line, to yep. me, to not have to do all that stuff. I agree. Yeah, it saves a lot of time, especially with, like, the laptops and all that crazy shit. Right? Mm-hmm. Let's see. I think I already mentioned this, but download audiobooks and podcasts, you know, to listen to, especially the PhotoWire podcast. you got to make sure you download that. Yeah. Um, Wear socks. Yeah, I actually got this written down. Please, for the love of God, stop wearing fucking flip-flops <laughs> and open-toed shoes at the damn airport. <laughs> That is, it's disgusting. There's germs and shit everywhere. <laughs> Nobody needs to see your gross ass feet on an airplane. Okay? Seriously. <laughs> it's a huge pet peeve of mine. I can't see. There's a pet peeve right there. We just hit a spot. It's even worse when people have shoes on. They take their shoes off on the plane, like they're mm-hmm. at home lounging, watching football, and their feet are smelling up the plane. Like, it's, <laughs> what, what are you people doing? Seriously. If you're, if you're one of those people, stop doing that. 
please. <laughs> Just stop. Um, grown up about it. Here's an, another one. I like to roll my clothes instead of folding them because they actually mm-hmm. it takes up less space and you don't get all the wrinkles and shit like from the creases in the shirts. Um, so I like to roll my stuff. Um, you are way tidier than me. I can just tell. Oh, I'm, I'm pretty emo. You know, I'm pretty OCD and kind of a. Yeah. But um, speaking of which, I, I like to bring Lysol wipes and I like to wipe down my my armrest and my tray tables because that shit is disgusting. My, my <laughs> wife watches a lot of YouTube videos on. Um, Shit, like, yeah, what am I talking about here? The, you know, the people on the plane, like the flight attendants uh-huh. and shit. So it's like their vlogs and stuff, and they mm-hmm. will go into some detail on some nasty shit. And those... Have you seen the Instagram account for passenger shaming? It's so good. Oh, I bet it is. I'm going to have to look at that. What is that? Do you know? I think it's just called passenger shaming, actually. Okay, I'll have to look it up. But That's... um, yeah, so I bring Lysol wipes to wipe down the tray tables and armrests and stuff like that on planes. I won't get any of the tap water or ice on planes because there again, they talk about. They don't serve tap water. They it's always bottled water. Yeah, but the, you, the thing so, you're not supposed to get yeah. is get their coffee because it's made with the water from the tank. Yeah, well, that and it's never actually caffeinated. They always give you decaf, even if you ask for caffeine, it's still decaf. What? Yeah, like my wife was showing me this. Uh, my wife was showing me this vlog on they you know, were telling like the inside secrets and stuff. Um, just because they don't want people to have too much energy and stuff on planes, and they would rather than <laughs> sleep potentially. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, that's, um, I guess, about all I got as far as travel tips and stuff go. I guess most of that was kind of airport related, but yeah. I mean, it's where we spend most of our time. Yep, true. Yeah. Did that pretty much Actually, um, you got? speaking of uh, being a germaphobe. I don't, I'm not germaphobic. I just prefer yeah, you that are. people's you are, like, babies, you are totally, diaper you're totally. shit that was changed on the tray <laughs> table to go into my food, you know? You done ranting it? Yeah. <laughs> Go so ahead. when you get to your hotel room, never touch the remote control or wipe it down with one of your handy little wipes. I'll wipe all that shit the dirtiest thing in the yep. hotel room. Disgusting. Um, yeah. So um, when I travel, because I am watching what I eat and trying to exercise and stuff like that, you know, I said I always stay in Marriott chain hotels because we have the account with them and everything and we get lots of free nights every year. But I also prefer to stay in the ones that have the little kitchenette. So that I can swing by like Trader Joe's or whatever and pick up some food and I cook for myself when I'm traveling instead of eating junk food constantly. Because, um, you know, I know everybody is always excited. You know, I have really cool couples and they get the best food at all their weddings. And it's it's a special occasion for them and they really want you to take some of it and and enjoy it because it's wonderful. But, But what people don't really realize is that this is my job and I'm doing this a lot and I can't eat all that all the time. Mm hmm. You know, it's like it's a it's a special occasion for them. It's a it's a once in a lifetime event, right? But for us, it's going to work, and yeah. so I, and especially because I have some food allergies, you know, I have to be very careful. I don't, you know, want to, you know, eat something I shouldn't, and when I'm trying to work or whatever. Yeah, so, good point. Yeah, so I've started just, you know, um, you know, I show up early. I have time to go to the grocery store, and and I have time to, you know, get the food that it's healthy for me to eat, so that I um show up, you know, energized and ready to go. And the other thing that is really important is the night before the wedding, get lots of sleep. Yes. Yeah. Especially if you've been traveling a lot, because that just wears you yeah. out anyways. It really does. And, um, yeah, I tend to, you know, I bring along, um, I have an app on my phone that makes white noise or pink noise or brown noise or whatever noise you like so that it drowns out all the people in the hotel. Um, I have my preferences set in the hotel so it's like when i check in they know that amanda likes a top floor extra feather pillows <laughs> and what's the other thing i forget now there's like three things that i have checked off you know it's like they they put me far away from the elevator they put me on the top floor and i think they put me they upgrade me a lot and i get like a larger suite and stuff like that sometimes baller yeah i, yeah. I travel pretty hood i'm a hood rat man i travel and i try to stay in like the motels where they're like shooting people across the street, you know, because they're, they're super cheap. Now, if I'm doing an extended trip, I change it up. But that's like, you know, my typical wedding weekend is is two nights, you know. And so it's like fly out Friday, fly back Sunday. Um, yeah, me too. Yeah, That's the basic thing. But like on a, on a longer trip, you know, if I'm doing like a road trip or whatever, I'll, I'll sleep in the car. I'm, you know. Not scared. Hashtag not scared. Not scared. Oh, it's scared. No. My, not scared. Not scared, but uh, yeah, we could we could do a whole episode about how to to do you know the low key, low yeah, profile things and you know sort of like this the what is it the stock 
I can't remember what it's called now, but yeah, you know, just the the low profile how to how to beat all the cool places at all the all the right times for those perfect shots and whatever. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, all right, cool. Uh, looks like we're kind of running a long time. Do you have anything else that you want to add before the bar closes here? Mm, I think that's it. I'm sure I'll come up with something later, but that's most of the the high points anyway. All right, cool. Hopefully that's helpful to some people. But um, before we kind of start wrapping stuff up, I want to give some iTunes uh, review shout outs. So I'm not actually going to read the reviews. Like I thought about that and I was like, I don't know, it kind of seems like a douchebag thing to do. So I'll figure (laughs) out just read the names, you know? Um, So we want to give a huge thank you to uh, Tyler Sanford Photo, uh, Fatal Attempt, um, Mall ATL, Mm -hmm. Hannah Art Photography. Yeah. MJ0413. All right. And uh, PA Photo Co. Woohoo. Thank you we all for you your, your reviews. And that was amazing. And if you would like your name shouted out and listed on the, our website as well, you know, leave a review and I'd be glad to do that for you guys um, because we appreciate the reviews, obviously, and uh, all the ratings and stuff. But um, I guess. You know, like I would be curious to see what other travel hacks and stuff people might have. So if you would like to join, you know, the conversation with us, aside from the podcast, um, you can join us at the Photo Bar Podcast. Uh, Our Facebook group is facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Photo Bar Podcast. Or you can just type in, um, I think it's Photo Bar Podcast Lounge in the search field there. You can email us at thephotobarpodcast at gmail.com. If you have ideas for topics, you'd like to tell us how bad we suck or anything else, you can feel free to do that. And of course, we want to make sure you never miss an episode, so be sure to hit the subscribe button and do it now so you don't forget. And share us with your friends. You know, we like to get around. So share the podcast with your friends, and we would love that. Yeah, lastly, if you can help grow the community, that would be amazing. And you can do that by leaving a five-star review on iTunes, Google Play Store, Stitcher, or, you know, wherever you listen to I, you know, a podcast at. Because it really helps us actually stay motivated and keep creating the content. I can't tell you how much feedback I'm actually getting back from people. Like people are like like uh, Facebook messaging and leaving emails and nice. stuff and reviews and stuff. Obviously, just telling us how amazing that the content is and they're really loving what we're doing. Um, so that that's super that's cool. Exciting. I love that. Yeah, yeah, it is, and that just makes me want to keep doing it and getting better at it and making it more fun and making the group bigger and better. But yeah, so. Leave some reviews. Um, even if you don't want to type in a review, just leave a five-star review. You can just type in whatever you want, like you love unicorns or whatever. That'd be awesome, too. Unicorns we actually, are awesome. Yeah. yeah. Or tell us a dad joke. That'd be cool. Leave a dad joke or something in there. Or zombie jokes. Uh, yeah. Any kind of cool joke. Oh. That'd be cool. Right. People just go to the reviews and it's fucking nothing but jokes and shit. <laughs> that would be the best reviews ever. It would be. All People the dad would be like, jokes. Oh, what is this? But, uh, yeah. So, I guess that's it for this episode. Um, and we'll see you guys in the Facebook group. I guess we'll just kind of shout out where people can find us and all that shit. You can go ahead, Amanda. Where can you find me? I'm on Instagram at the Amanda Summerlin. I'm on Facebook at, I think it's Amanda Summerlin. I forget now. And my website's amandasummerlin.com. That, that's where I am. So sometimes. everybody should just go there and find everything else. Maybe. <laughs> Pretty much. If you just yeah. go to my website, you can link to the other stuff. It says, I obviously don't know where I am. Yeah, I'm about the same way. Um, so you can actually follow the Photo Bar podcast on Instagram. We're on Instagram now. Did you know that? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's at Photo Bar Podcast on Instagram. And if you use the hashtag, I think it's uh, PB Podcast. I think it's what we're using. Um, I'm featuring people that listen to the podcast, their photos and stuff on there. So Those that's are cool. cool. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. It's cool to see everybody's work and how different it is and stuff like that. Yeah, other than that, you can find me personally at MatthewDruin.com is the website. Uh, my Instagram is at Matt Druin. My Facebook is uh, shit, Facebook.com forward slash Matthew Druin Photography. And oh, yeah. Twitter is at Matthew Druin. And anything else that I'm forgetting, you can just go to my website and find it there. Ask Alexa. She knows. She knows me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Is there anything else or is that it? That's it. Send dryer sheets. We'll be good. All right. Until next time, we're out. Wait, which side of this thing am I talking to? Oh, shit. (laughs) The the front. (laughs) Whee!